What are you doing, lad? Left. Mrs. Ashley, really charming. You certainly worked wonders. It looks very nice in me. Thank you, madam. Ah, oh, finished. There you are. As you can see, we have the good fortune to have Mary here as a visitor. It was such a surprise, Mr. Ashley, when your cousin came to fetch me. The others were green with envy. Mm -hmm. Can I speak to you, please? <laughs> yes, of course. As soon as Mary is no. settled... No, I'm afraid it cannot wait. You're at liberty to say anything you please in front of Mary. I don't wish to make intrusion. Let me go and unpack, Mrs. Ashley. Very well. Leave the doors wide open, Mary, so you can hear me if I call. Yes, certainly, Mrs. Ashley. <coughs> Why have you done this? After last night, I cannot be with you alone again. How long is she to stay? As long as I choose. Rachel, this can't be settled in a moment's conversation with the doors open. I beg of you, listen to me. Let me talk to you alone, please. You threatened me last night. Once was enough. There is nothing to settle. Now go.
Right. I have been ill. You are lucky to be alive. Am I? I think it was your own horse strength that pulled you through. And certain things I bade them do. I made a serum out of the juices of herbs. They called it poison. But you have survived. Is, um... Is Mary Pasco still here? I sent her away. Last week. Well, Tamlin, we shall uh, we should lay a footpath along the bottom, and there'll be that bridgeway going from side to side, sir. They've only just started work on that, of course. It's bigger than I thought. Deeper. Yes, it's. Uh... It's most impressive, Tamlin. Thank you, sir. Where did you find that? Oh, the mistress had that brought from Italy, sir. Uh, we thought we might make a fountain in the bottom. It'd be nice if we could have another little figure up at the other end, sir. Perhaps the mistress will get one when she goes back to Italy. I, uh, I don't think she has any intention of returning, Tamlin. I'm glad of that, sir, but we heard different. That she was only waiting for you to get better before she went. Let's discuss it. Uh, I wouldn't do that, sir, not if I was you. That's laburnum, see? It is poisonous, sir. Hello? Hello. Oh. Hello, Louise. This is a surprise. Thank you, Tom. Morning, Miss Louise. How are you, Philip? I'm much, much better, thank you. Well, don't I look it? Indeed you do. I heard you'd been making changes. Yes. This is a great improvement, don't you think? Philip, I must talk to you. Is something wrong? Yes, something is wrong. Well, what is it? Philip, I've been worried about you for such a long time now. I wanted to talk to you after that dreadful birthday dinner. But then you it's were about Rachel. Please listen to what I have to say. I only want to help you. You set yourself against her from the very start. You made up your mind to dislike her. What about you? Don't you remember what you said about her before she came? You mistrusted her. And with good reason. You must stop this, Louise. If you continue talking, we shall hate each other. Do you love her then so much? Be honest with yourself, Philip. What does the future hold now for either of you? I have asked her to marry me. I asked her once and twice. And I shall ask her again and again until she consents. When was the first time you asked her? When, Philip? On the morning of my birthday. What did she answer you? We, we, we spoke at cost purposes. I thought that she meant yes, when in fact she meant no. Had she read your document at that time? No, she read that later, later the same morning. She lost little time in reading it then and driving out to see my father. She did not understand it very well. She understood it when she drove away. I remember perfectly. As the carriage waited and we stood upon the steps, my father said to her, the remarriage clause may strike a little hard, 
You must remain a widow if you wish to keep your fortune. And Mrs. Ashley smiled at him and said that suits me very well. Stop looking for trouble, Louise. A clause was inserted to safeguard the estate. To prevent any squander by a stranger. If she were my wife, it would not apply. If she were your wife, the whole estate would revert to you again. That's the law, Philip. Yes, but... But she knows I would share every penny of it with her. But she wouldn't refuse to marry me because of that one clause, would she? Is that what you're trying to suggest? I am not suggesting anything. But remember that a wife cannot take her husband's money from the country, nor return to the place where she belongs. She belongs here, Louise, with me. Then why is she planning to return to Florence? But she is not. Everyone speaks of it. Gossip. Malicious gossip. Why does she ride into town every day? Well, why shouldn't she? She goes to the bank, Philip. I'm sure she's sending money out of the country and... Yes? She goes to the inn by the harbour. The schooner. She meets someone there. How do you know all this? I heard the servants talking. Gossiping. All right, gossiping. Perhaps it is true. When she goes to this inn, who does she meet there? I do not know. You must believe me, Philip. I do not know. Nick Kendall tells me that there is fresh gossip about the countryside. What now? Well, that you are going back to Florence. Tamlin tells me the same. There is plenty of time to decide about these things. Well, have you sold the villa yet? No, I can afford to keep it now, can't I? Have you let it? No. You mean that you would want to spend the winter there? Possibly. Or the late summer. Why is there any need to go at all? You belong here. This is your home. Philip, you must stop behaving like this. Like what? As if we were married or intended to marry. You know very well that cannot be. I've made it abundantly clear. No one could have made it clearer. So, uh, letters will pass between us, will they? From England to Italy, month after month throughout the year. I will say to you, uh, dear Rachel, the camellias are in bloom, and you will reply, dear Philip, I am very glad to hear it. My rose garden is doing very well. Is that to be our future? You could visit me in the spring. There's much you would like in Italy. How long has Rinaldi been here? That's my business. Answer me. Very well, for the past two weeks. Why is he here? Because I asked him, because I needed his advice. Why should you need his advice? Philip, will you stop behaving like a child and have some understanding? Oh, you expect me to understand deceit. You have been lying to me every day for the past two weeks and you cannot deny it. If I have deceived you, it was for your sake only. You hate Rinaldi. If you had known I was meeting him, this scene would have come this soon and I just could not bear the idea of it. Oh, God, must I go through this again? First with Ambrose, now with you. He's in love with you. 
Rainaldi? He has been for years. He's my friend, that's all. He's my friend. Send him away, then. Send him back where he belongs. He's already gone. Gone? He sails from Plymouth tomorrow. When will you follow him? That depends on you. Philip, if only you could be less bitter and less cruel. No, leave me now. Please. Leave me. As the weeks pass, I notice more and more how she turns for advice to a man I have mentioned before in my letters. Signor Rinaldi. I believe this man to have a pernicious influence upon her. What is it that they say to one another when I am not there? Are they trying to poison me? So sorry you have to leave, Mr. Kendall. Indeed, so am I. But I have a brother sick at Luxilia and I promised to call and see him. Oh, I hope he's nothing serious. Oh, I do think it's serious. Make an excuse to stay behind. I must talk to you. Father, would you mind if I didn't come with you? It's 
so hot and stuffy in the carriage. I will bring her home later. Well, it will be no trouble. Yes, very well. Thank you again, Mrs. Ashley. I shall see you next Sunday, if not before. I hope so. <laughs> I'm so glad you decided to stay a little longer. We have so few opportunities for any conversation. I suppose the heat in Florence now must be well nigh unbearable, even to you. I never found it so. I am lucky at the Villa Sangaletti, and having a little courtyard beside the house. It faces north and is always pleasantly cool. In spring and in summer, I never sit anywhere else. Very good, Tamil. Now, who will come for a walk with me? Louise? If you will excuse me, Mrs. Ashley, but it is rather hot, is it not? I shall have to go by myself, then. I want to see what Tamlin and his men have been doing at the sunken garden. Be careful, then. Careful? I thought I'd better warn you, sir, not to stand on the bridgeway over the sunken garden. There's only a framework as yet and won't bear no weight upon it. Be careful of walking too long in the sun. Quickly. We haven't got much time. Remember that conversation we had last week? Well, you were right, and I was wrong. And I have suspicions of worse beside. I believe she has tried to poison me, and that she did the same to Ambrose. But I must have final proof. It doesn't matter now how I discovered it, but the proof may lie in a letter from that man Rinaldi. You know Italian, don't you? Just a little. Yes, yes, you do. You learned it with your French. Now, between us, we can make it. Some kind of translation. Why did you not warn my father? If she is guilty, he could accuse her with greater force than you. Because I must have proof. You shouldn't be doing this, Philip. What you are doing now is what anyone might do, a common thief. Here. What's this? I'm not sure. I think there's a list of plants. The writing is not clear. But yes, the site is written in English. It's a list of plants and herbs. Look, Philip Burnham. Yes, it's here. Does it mention poison? No, it, it just says that it's a native of South Europe and should be transplanted in March. What is it? It's a letter from the bank. Listen. Dear madam, we thank you for the return of the Ashley collection of jewels, which, according to your instruction as you are shortly to leave the country, will remain with us in custody until such time as your heir, Mr. Philip Ashley, may take possession of them. Uh, the letter I'm looking for is not here. It's not hidden it. Have you looked through the blotter? No. This is it. Here, read it. What does it say? 
But it is in English. Here, you see, he says, since you have become more English than Italian, I write to you in your language of adoption. I will do all you ask of me in Florence, though I am not sure you deserve any of it. At least, the villa will be waiting for you, and the servants, when you at last decide to tear yourself away. Do not delay too long. I have never had great faith in those impulses of your heart and your emotions. If in the end you cannot bring yourself to leave that boy behind, then bring him with you. I warn you, though, against my better judgment. Have a care to yourself. And believe me, your friend. That's a nice letter, Philip. A friendly letter. There is nothing criminal in that. No. It's Ambrose. How ill he looks. Here. What's this at the bottom? Non ramentari. Che leore felici. Remember, only the... Remember only the happy hours. Did she not show it to you before? No. Can you have misjudged her, do you think? About the poison? You can see for yourself there is no proof. No. No. There is not any proof. And there never will be. Not now. Not ever. If there is no proof, Philip, you cannot condemn her. She may be innocent. She may be guilty. Yes. Yes, you're right. If she is innocent and you accused her, you would be guilty then, not she. And you would never forgive yourself, Philip. No. Let's go now, please. I wish we had not meddled with her things. Where is she coming? Do you see her? No. No. No!
used to hang men at four turnings in the old days. Not any more, though.